The lipids are the next type of organic molecule that comes up a lot in biology. Lipids, uh, what do they all have in common? What they all have in common is that they do not like to dissolve in water. So we would say they are hydrophobic. They don't like to mix with water. Um, apart from that, there's a lot of variety present in the lipids. We're gonna take a look at three different major classes of lipids. They are as follows. We have the triglycerides. Um, the triglycerides are the type of lipid that is um, storing energy. I, me I mentioned that, that there's one other type of energy storage molecule. Here it is. The triglycerides are for energy storage. This is the type of molecule that's present in fat. And then another type of lipid that we have are the phospholipids. And the phospholipids are essentially what make up the membranes of all of our cells. So we'll be seeing a lot of that uh, when we get to the chapter on cells coming up. Um, a third class of lipid would be the steroids. I'm sure you've heard of steroids. Steroids do a lot of different things in our bodies. Um, so the, the thing that you might have that might be coming to mind is like building up muscle. That's just one thing that steroids do in the body. There are a lot of other roles for steroids too. And steroids um, have a really characteristic ring structure. So we're gonna walk through all three of these classes one at a time. Let's start off with the triglycerides and just take a look at them. So again, the major job of a triglyceride is to store energy in fat tissue. Um, the name for fat tissue is adipose. Adipose tissue is fat tissue. And the triglycerides include two different things. They include the fats, but they also include the oils. And so triglycerides, what is the basic structure of a triglyceride molecule? All triglycerides have this in common. They have something called a glycerol molecule, and then they have three chains that kind of hang off of that glycerol molecule. So let me just put the picture down and we'll take a look together. So here is a glycerol, and it is connected to three fatty acid chains. So notice these fatty acids, they're just carbons linked together with hydrogens attached as well. And there are a couple of different options here with the fatty acid chains. Either we could have carbons that are completely filled up with hydrogen bonding, or not hydrogen bonding, but connections, covalent bonds with hydrogen, um, in which case we would say this is a saturated fat. Or the other sort of extreme is if we jump over to here, we could have some carbons that have not formed the maximum number of connections yet to hydrogen. Um, so we have some double bonds present. We could add another hydrogen in here, break that double bond and get another hydrogen attached, in which case um, this would become a saturated chain. But as is right now, there are a number of um, spots where it's like there's still a potential to take on more hydrogens. So we say that this is unsaturated. The big difference between these is that, um, well, if you look at these tails, these uh, fatty acid tails, they're kind of all squiggly, okay? they're not very straight, and so they don't like to pack up against each other very neatly. They, they tend to not pack. And so this structure ends up being liquid at room temperature. These are gonna be the oils, whereas this one tends to be solid at room temperature because those chains can pack against each other really tightly and sort of settle in against each other. So this would be like butter, for example. This would be like olive oil, for example. And that's the big difference between the fats and the oils, is whether those fatty acid chains are saturated or not saturated. Another class of lipid would be the phospholipids. And I'll go back and forth between these slides a couple of times. They, at a glance, they look super similar, right, if you're looking at the picture. What's the difference if you look between these two? Um, back with the triglycerides, we had three fatty acid chains. Now here with the phospholipids, we have just two. So that's one, one big difference. Still, we have essentially a glycerol molecule up here at the top, um, but it is connected to two fatty acids and a phosphate group. So this is new. We have a phosphate group showing up here on this end. And phosphate groups, pointing to the wrong thing right there, phosphate group. Phosphate groups are very, um, hydrophilic. They like to mix with water. This is a polar 
a polar section of the molecule and so it's going to enjoy being close to water. So this gets really interesting. With phospholipids we have a section that does not like to mix with water. It's nonpolar, um, hydrophobic. And then we have another section that is hydrophilic, does like to mix with water. This is going to be, this is really important um, for understanding how membranes form in cells. So we'll come back to that when we talk about cells coming up next week. Our third class of lipid is the steroids. And mentioned this already, steroids have many functions. We're not gonna try and list them all out right now. Um, we'll kind of come to them here and there throughout the semester. But what do they all have in common? All steroids have a ring structure and specifically four rings connected together. So if we look at these structures, this is cholesterol that's shown right here. And again, each of these corners would be a carbon atom. It's just not labeled with a C, but there's a carbon at each of these corners. And so it's a carbon-based ring structure, four rings built from carbon. Um, and then there can be other attachments as well. Cholesterol is something that is present in cell membranes. It helps with the structure, giving it a certain amount of rigidity. Um, but cholesterol is also a precursor for a lot of other steroids, including estrogen and testosterone. So that's kind of um, interesting there. There's a reaction pathway that allows conversion of cholesterol into either of these forms. 